my name is Emma. I studied abroad in Cannes, France, and today I'm going to be showing you some useful words and phrases that I wish I would have known before going. Alrighty, let's get started. So this first phrase is something that I used quite a bit once I learned how to say it. This one's a good one because you know, sometimes you don't really know what people are trying to say. When in doubt, just tell them that you didn't understand. It's better to do that than somebody yanking your chain and asking you some really wild questions when they know your French isn't too good. And then you say yes or no to them when you think you understand. And the way you pronounce this is je pas compris. And you may notice that I didn't pronounce half the things here, but in French when you do the negations, you don't ever really pronounce this end. So when you're speaking, je pas compris. When you're writing, je n'ai pas compris. <laughs> so saying good morning and good afternoon and good evening in France is actually really important. When you go into a store, like a smaller shop, make sure that you say hello to everyone. Or when you're leaving, make sure you say have a good day to everyone. And I'm gonna show you how to say that right now. So I'm almost certain that you've heard the word bonjour before. Bonjour is good morning, or it's kind of how they say hello. So bonjour is something that you would say to someone from 4 a.m. when you first wake up. I don't know if you wake up at 4 a.m., but that's kind of like if you're up at 4 a.m., uh, you'll say bonjour all the way up until about around 5.30, 6 p.m. Depending on who you are, you'll say bonjour up until 6 or 7. You, sometimes you'll hear people say it only till 4. So it just depends on who you are start saying it later, you can start saying it at four if you'd like, but really it's more so towards five and six. And you can say that when you greet people all the way up until four in the morning-ish. I don't know why you'd be up till four in the morning, but if you are, you can still greet people by saying bonsoir or bonjour around this time. It's a little confusing, however you wanna do it, it's not gonna be too serious around these hours of the night. So when you're leaving a place, it's important and polite to say have a good day to people. You'll hear it from shop owners, you'll hear it from people working at restaurants, you'll hear it from people on the street that you cross by. So just as a rule of thumb, go ahead and tell them to have a good day, to have a good evening, to have a good afternoon. This first one is how you're gonna say have a good day, and that's going to be bonne journée. This is something I usually say from <laughs> around 4 in the morning if I wake up that early all the way up until around 4 p.m. So when you're leaving, bonne journée. So this next one is how you're gonna say have a good afternoon. It's kind of a special one. You can say bonne journée for this time period still, but right around noon to like 2 o'clock in the afternoon, you're able to say bon après-midi, which is good afternoon. So when you're leaving, bon après-midi. You don't hear this one as much. It's usually just bonne journée, but you're welcome to say it if you like. This last one is how you're gonna say have a good evening. And this one is just pronounced as bonne soirée. This one you can start saying around five o'clock. So when you're leaving, bonne soirée. I know I just gave you a lot of specific times when you can start and end saying things. They're not so specific like that. Some days you'll start, thing, start saying, bonjour at certain times and sometimes you'll start saying bonsoir at different times. You'll just figure it out as you go, but those are kind of the rule of thumbs of what time periods you'll start saying these things. This next one is how you say I'm looking forward to. It's j'ai hâte. So I don't know about you, this one was really useful to me just to show my excitement towards things. The sense is is I'm looking forward to and you can use it in that way but it's also I'm excited to. So if you're going out with your friends or you have a concert that you bought tickets for or a, a trip to Italy you can say ah j'ai hâte. So this next one is 
how you're going to say I'm full. So the French do not say I'm full. So please don't try and translate that. Do not make the same mistake I did. If you say I'm full and you translate it that way, they could think that you're full of something else. So instead, you're going to say I ate well. And the way you pronounce that is j'ai bien mangé. So when someone asks you, would you like more food? You can say, non, merci, j'ai bien mangé. So this next one's direct English translation is, it's not serious. However, the sense is more so like, don't worry about it, or it's not a big deal. The way you're going to pronounce this is, c'est pas grave. So, for example, say someone bumps into you at the supermarket, you can say, ah, non, c'est pas grave, if they say sorry. Or if something falls off the table and spills everywhere, you can say, ah, c'est pas grave. And then that way people know not to worry. This next one is, il faut pas. And the sense for il faut pas is like, that's not necessary, or you don't have to, or you must not. So you can say, il faut pas go to the grocery store right now because it's not necessary. Or someone, you might ask, can I help you? And they might respond with, il faut pas, like that's not necessary. So this next one is, il faut, this first one right here. Il faut is like, it's necessary, or please do this. So for example, someone will tell you, oh, you just have to do this. You just have to go to the Grand Canyon. You just have to do this. You just have to do that. That sort of sense is what this sense is. So when someone just says, il faut, it's like, you must. I don't know about you, but I often like asking my friends how they're doing, or what's going on, or if something's wrong. So this one is how you ask, and you're concerned about somebody's well-being. You can say, qu'est-ce qu'il y a? Which is like, what's wrong? Or like, basically a way for you to ask them to tell you how they're doing. Along those lines, you can also say, ça va? Which is the same, are you okay? How's it going? You can also say, tu vas bien, and this is just with your friends because you're using that to form. Or you can say, tu te passes bien, which is like, everything's going okay. So along the same lines, tons of different ways to say the same thing. Just pick which one which you like the most. So this next one is how you say what in French. So you can use this if you didn't understand something, if you didn't hear something someone said, or if you're just shocked. Some things to keep in mind is that there are two ways to say this and it's important to know that one way is formal and one way is informal. So the formal way to say what would be comment. Um, the uninformal way to say what is quoi. So you would use quoi with your friends and you'd use comment if you were talking to an adult. Do not make that mistake of saying quoi to an adult because that is seen as very impolite and I learned that the hard way. And the last one is how you ask what the meaning of something is or what someone means. So there's two ways of doing this, just like in the last one. One more formal way and one more informal way. The top one is going to be more formal. So, qu'est-ce que ça veut dire? And the more informal one is, ça veut dire quoi? So you'd use ça veut dire quoi with your friends and qu'est-ce que ça veut dire uh, with someone who you don't really know too well or an adult. I really like these two phrases because they can help you figure out what people are really trying to say, as well as if you need help in understanding the sense of something, people will explain it after they hear this phrase. That's all I've got for now. Thank you so much for listening. I hope these were helpful. I hope you learn all of your own phrases that help you out. Just remember that learning a language is something that's kind of difficult. So take your time, breathe, relax, and just have fun with it. Make mistakes, learn from them, in mind too, the people who are listening to you talk or who are native speakers probably know that you're not a native speaker, so they're going to give you a lot of grace for either not using formal verbs or using the wrong verb tenses. Either way, if you can learn to express yourself in another language, you don't have to get all the grammar right, you just have to be able to communicate. Ciao!